Yeah, sure. There's an old saying in the Windows org that every day is Groundhog's Day. And um, I might be making that up, but uh, that's pretty much Yeah, there's we're another at. old saying that is that my career is me playing whack-a-mole <laughs> with that groundhog. So uh, I had been hearing about this a little bit, and then uh, conveniently timed, uh, Zach and Mary Jo Foley both came out with like basically the same post, uh, mm -hmm. things that I'd been floating around. Here's the, here's the, if you could jump into a time machine, into 2018, I wrote a post on Petri called... Uh, my Windows Lite is effectively a Chrome OS competitor. Like that's what yep. Microsoft was working on. And that was absolutely true at that time. And then you, you went forward a couple months, whatever. And then they started adding in Project Veil, which was supposed to con containerize Win32 applications into Windows 10. And then you go a little bit further forward and they say, hey, we're going to put this thing on dual screen devices. That's how we're going to ship this. We're going to make it a flagship product. And so then we that was where the record scratch sounded for me because I also saw, I saw some of the early pictures of what it looked like. It made sense to me. Yeah. We need a Chrome OS competitor in the windows space obviously windows is failing badly and it are failing badly compared to chrome os and education yeah. and then they announced it like it's going to be on dual screen devices what yep this thing was not designed for dual screen devices people i'm just it just wasn't and then I mean, at some point in 2019 they were like we need to differentiate it further yep but whatever stupid then anyway. the next step of the timeline is that they delayed surface neo uh, this was this puts us like yep. winter somewhere twenty twenty spring yeah, February something like that March yeah. and then uh, coming out around today uh, was the, I think the actual uh, internal stuff was made like a few weeks ago maybe even a little bit longer anyways mm -hmm. uh, they said okay we're not going to actually include Win thirty two app containerization and so we are right back almost square one to where they were in 2018 minus about 18 months of development and marketing time. All right. So now I got to scratch the record again, because yep. I got to tell you something I've told everyone many times. If it doesn't run windows apps, it's not windows. Right. And it fails. And, and I got to tell you offering a <laughs> something. I mean, I guess the good news is it won't look like windows. This has been the problem with a lot of the other things. It's still going to be called windows. Well, we don't know that. Now that's a good point. If, well, okay. you, if well, you go well, back well, to my 2018 yeah. post, <laughs> yeah, they were they were they were aware that you can't call to your point. You can't call something Windows if it's not running Windows apps, and so uh, yeah. I think it was Mary okay. Jo wrote um, again that she's hearing that like, hey, they may not actually call this Windows because it's really not, and we'll see. So this is it's funny because we just had a, a a thin client conversation on uh, Windows Weekly for some reason. I can't even remember why it came up. And this triggered a bunch of thin client questions in Ask Paul on Friday. And and I actually have a <laughs> an article I haven't published yet called Live the Thin Client Dream with OneDrive, which is the truth is there's no such thing as a PC thin client, right? But from a storage perspective, we can mm -hmm. kind of approach it as a, like a thin client because we need a lot less storage on most PCs than we used to. Okay, so that's that article, whatever. But it, like obviously Windows 10X is – what we would call like a modern take on what a thin client is and a Chrome OS type system, mm -hmm. in other words. Yeah, okay. But what I, what makes this idea more viable today than it was two years ago? What may, like, what's the, mm -hmm. are, we, are we really just, we're just going to do this again? Is that what we're going to do? If we're going to do this again, Brad, here, actually, throw, throw it on. See this little guy over here? See? See that? Mm -hmm. See that? Yeah. What is yeah. it? What is it, Brad? What is well, that thing? You're pointing at books. No, the, the, the little box. Oh, it, Windows. I believe it's a Windows phone. It's a little blurry on this end. It but. is. Yeah, it's a Windows phone. Yep. In fact, it's the first Windows phone. It's the Samsung prototype device they sent out to developers before the system shipped. Mm -hmm. Why don't we just do that again, Brad? That yeah. didn't work either. Well, the, the interesting <laughs> it, thing is, so what their plan the is, is to stream Win32 apps from the cloud. Stream. Um, now, this isn't the first time we've heard this. Actually, I, if you remember, HP tried this with, was it the HP Elite, whatever Windows phone where you could... Yes, I have. That's one of the many things I have in my cellar. I was just yeah. telling Brad, I spent much of the weekend going through all the boxes in my cellar. And I have... An, oh, it's unbelievable what I have down there. Dude. You wouldn't believe the phones. And so, it's crazy. But um, among the many things I have down there are the... What, what was that thing called? Um, 
It was X3 something. It was like yeah, HP something. Elite X3. X3? Something. Yeah. It sounds weird, but yeah, okay. So, uh, probably Elite X3. Envy X3? Elite X3. Uh, I have all of the little attachments, the dock. I've got the laptop mm-hmm. dock thing, right? Remember that? Yep. I, that day when they briefed the press, I, I know guys from HP really well, and one of the guys brought me over to meet the guy who was responsible for this. Mm-hmm. And he said, tell him what you just said <laughs> to me. And I said... Are you fucking insane? Yeah. <laughs> he was like, "What?" And I said, "This is never going to work." And he says, oh, "I don't know. We have enterprise customers." I'm like, "No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't. Nobody wants this." I so, just I would just uh, offer the same rhetorical yep. question to the people making Windows 10x: If you can't get Win32 containers to work. You know, in other words, the performance isn't there. Probably compatibility. Mm-hmm. I think those are the two big issues. Um, you know, maybe don't ship it. Maybe put the UI on Windows 10 mm. Home, make it an an option, right? Because that's all that's left, isn't it? Yeah, pretty much. So but we've yeah, some icons. Some okay, but I mean, no one, <laughs> no one has yeah shown any interest in something that is Windows that doesn't run Windows apps. So. I, no one has shown any interest in something that's called something else from you. Zune. Yeah. Uh, you know, whatever. I mean, the, just no. Just the, I no. think the kicker here is uh, mm-hmm. that they're still targeting that Win32 app containerization support, but not until 2022. At, you know, probably at the earliest at this point, I would guess, based on how things that's are going. But great. like, what's what's the point? Sort of. But I, think, I really feel like there's a hubris uh, element to this that is a problem. And it's this, I'm gonna, I don't mean to pin it completely on Panos, Binet, but it's in the Surface group, which is now the Microsoft group, right? So it is this desire, this need to create new form factors that other people can then emulate other companies. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, and they were, they're so proud of the Surface Pro form factor, which they should be. It, you know, it worked. Yeah. Nothing else they've done has worked. Nothing. No one has ever copied the Surface Book. Well, the Surface Laptops and MacBook Air. The, uh, <laughs> any of the other stuff they make, no one has. No one. I mean, I guess you could say there's a couple of one-offs that are sort of like Surface Studio. You mm-hmm. know, you drag the screen down, you draw on it. But, I mean, those are by nature niche, niche devices. They're expensive. Um, I, I don't understand. I, I just I don't understand. I just don't understand. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, this is. doesn't make sense. This will be another one to watch. Um, you know, I. The thing that kills me is like I, I went back and looked at what we wrote in 2018 about this and, and nothing has really changed except for right. the loss of time. Well, I was going to say nothing has changed, including the fact that they haven't shipped it yet. You know, two yeah. years. I mean, and it's been in development longer than that. Um, look, I, 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 it was the event. We were there together uh, that they announced the original Surface laptop it was an mm-hmm. education event. And uh, Terry Morrison made a big show of like, look, we have this USB based thing and you can walk around and pop it into each computer. Like this made any sense at all. And it's like, okay, I'm sorry. This ridiculous sneaker net solution that you just created is better than what you had before. Did you just That's call it why sneaker net? Yeah, because you're walking around. No, no, I get it. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> That's awesome. you don't. This is why Chrome OS is succeeding in education, right? The problem with, with education, which, by the way, is. Probably the problem with a lot of startups, I would say, in general, smaller companies, unless it's a tech startup, right, is that nobody is technologically inclined. Like they don't, they're, they're not, they don't, they're not PC support people, you know. Mm-hmm. And it forces you to think different about it from a support perspective, and it's why Chrome OS is so well liked by educators because it doesn't require a PhD in computer science to figure it out. Um, you know, walking around with a USB key also probably doesn't require a PhD in computer science. It just requires time. And time, by the way, is another thing that educators don't have. So I, I just, I don't, I get it. I mean, I get it. I, mm. I, I theoretically, you and I both, I think, agreed probably two years ago that Microsoft needs a Chrome OS competitor. Yes. That this, it, it, but, you know, that itself requires there to be some sophisticated family of web apps to have occurred. Mm-hmm. And I, I, maybe, I, I mean, is, do we have this? Don't you, wouldn't, I mean, it just seems to me like, I guess it's there. I don't know. Doesn't what Google Docs just seem like a simpler thing than Microsoft? So here's, here's the only thing that kind of holds, not holds on to hope, but yeah. would make sense to me, is that they can build 
an extremely lightweight version of Windows or whatever you want to call it, whatever you mm -hmm. want to call it, that, that, that runs three or, or one service. It runs Microsoft 365. That's it. And it, yeah. it's all accessed and managed no, through right. Right. the cloud, right. through their web apps, through their everything else. And now that for Microsoft is their bread and butter. That's their enterprise customers. It's like, look, you have a first line worker that needs something that they can just slam around and it costs you 250 bucks and accesses all the stuff. Here you go. So, uh, yeah, you're right. I mean, I guess uh, the way I uh, look, if someone were to say, look, I'm tired of this Windows crap, I'm switching to the Mac. You'd be like, okay, you know, there's a learning curve there. There's some things you're not going to have. Mm -hmm there's an expense to it for sure. Um, and then you're like, well, what are you going to do about that one app or the, you know, whatever that you need. And, and those virtual apps can occur in business or for individuals soon through windows, virtual desktop or other solutions, right? And those are available everywhere. If you, for some reason wanted to adopt Linux, um, mm -hmm. I guess if you needed that one windows app, there are obviously virtualization solutions and remote desktop, but, yeah, I mean, I think the key for Microsoft is to make this kind of seamless. And they, they did, honestly, uh, for enterprises that had the technical acumen, I mean, many years ago, almost 20 years ago, they had the ability to remotely deliver an application yeah. to a PC over the network from a data center. Now now it's coming from the cloud. Fine, it's even better. Um, so, yeah, I mean, they could they could make this a very natural experience. It relies on bandwidth for sure. I mean, mm -hmm. that's where the whole thin client thing came from. Um, I, just, <laughs> I think, I I think it's got to be a business play. That's the, that's yeah, that's okay, the thing that fair. makes the most sense. But why see? The, OK, but you know that the first Windows 10 X devices are not going to look like Surface Laptop, right? It's going to mm -hmm. be some goofy tablet thing. It's going to be a Surface Go device or something. Yep. Like you know, they're going to have like they're going to try to make it some touch portable. It's not, it, they're never going to call it a PC. Mm -hmm. You know. We'll see. Um, one of the other challenges too, when you're talking about switching uh, to Mac, is soon that uh, switching over to them will soon cost you an arm <laughs> and a leg. Wow. Or at least an arm. <laughs> <laughs> I had to try to shoehorn that joke in there. I was like, yeah. oh, that's actually pretty good. That's so, good. Yeah. Anyway, so that's you know that's what's going on with 10x uh, in the summer of of 2020. We'll be back in 2022 uh, with an update on where that is. Hey, uh, before we go, hmm? what is your you're going away this week? <clears throat> well, maybe. <laughs> well, no, oh, jeez, okay. So Why, what's happening? Uh, yeah, I kind of forgot about that actually already because it we will honestly probably not decide until like Wednesday afternoon because oh, wow. we're. Well, we're just going to go, for those who don't know, we're going to go stay in George's house down, um, and that's our boss, uh, down Florida on the Gulf Shores. Yeah. Uh, here, here's the reason yeah. why. There is a tropical disturbance over the uh, Cuba, Puerto, not Puerto Rico, Cuban area. And mm -hmm. if, like, we're not going to drive all the way down there to sit in clouds and, and rain. Um, okay. So that's what we're waiting on. Okay. How and long is that drive for you? Yeah, it's like 10 and a half hours. It's a long drive, but it's honestly, it's very easy. Like we get on the highway that is like a mile and a half from here mm -hmm. and you, and you go south on that same highway until mm -hmm. you hit water and then you turn right for 30 minutes. <laughs> like it's funny. It's, yeah. 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 Do you go through any cities or buy any cities? Yeah. I mean, you go through all the major cities. You go through like Louisville one and, uh, what do we hit in Tennessee? I can never remember it's Knoxville or whatever. And then you hit like Birmingham. Then you hit. Um, I mean, it's just, it's 75 South. So it's a major, major highway. Interesting. Yeah. So oh, it must be, I went to Nashville one time and went to Alabama from Nashville? there. I, mean, you know, my I can't remember. I know it's like Memphis, Nashville, and what's the other one? Uh, the other big one. You said it. Knoxville. Uh, Knox, Knoxville. No, wait. Knoxville is, is Knoxville in? Hold on, I'll tell well, you, you see it. Americans failing at geography. Um, yeah, no, it's Knoxville. I think. Or was it Nashville? No, it's Nashville. It's Nashville. I thought it might be Nashville only because I went to <clears throat> Alabama from Nashville. Yeah, Nashville's right in the middle. Yep. I see. Yeah, it could be Knoxville too. Actually, Knoxville for you. Knoxville's you, on the you way. You could go through Knoxville. Um, that's one of the other routes that you can take if there's like a major accident or something and you get rerouted. But Okay. Yeah, like the highway's bigger if you go through mm -hmm. Louisville. Okay. So anyway, really so... If we just stop showing up on Thursday, then uh, that's well. You should know by you'll know Wednesday, right? Like, yeah, what, yeah, what yeah. drive Thursday? 
Yeah, we'll wake up Thursday morning and then just hit the road and just. And what uh, day would would you come back if this happened? Monday or probably Tuesday, I think. Yeah. Okay. Something like that. As my wife put it, she goes, "I'm just looking forward to talking to other people." <laughs> yeah. No offense to the person I'm telling that to. Um, <laughs> Um, yeah. So when this is over, I'm probably going to take a few days off myself, but I'll figure yep. I, it, it will be over the next, the weekend after that. So it, yep. not this coming weekend. So there you go, folks. Uh, much like right. 10X, we're going to take our sweet, sweet time. <laughs> yep. Game time decisions.